Hi everybody, I feel kind of silly. I looked ahead at chapter eight and it's super short. I should have just finished the book yesterday, but here we go. Let's finish this story. It is called, or the last chapter is called Confusion. I had confusion in my head because first I hated roosters, only then I like Spike, only Spike is going to be a rooster. And so now what am I supposed to do? I didn't talk much after that because confusion takes a lot of thinking, that's why. Plus, also, I might need counseling, probably. Finally, the children finished seeing the chickens and they came out through the gate. Then Farmer Flores held my hand one more time and, she, and he took us to a field with wildflowers in it. He said we could pick wildflowers for our mothers because that would be like a gift from a gift shop, he said. After all of us had our flowers, Mrs. took our picture with the nice man. And here is the bestest part of all. Farmer Flores took off his hat and his head was not a nub. I danced all around that guy, very thrilled. Farmer Flores, Farmer Flores, your head is not a nub. Your head is not a nub. He wrinkled up his eyebrows. Uh, thank you, he said, kind of quiet. You're welcome, Farmer, I said back, because guess what? Now I don't have to be afraid of roosters anymore. I jumped up and down. Now maybe I can be afraid of ghosts, just like goats, just like you, I shouted. After that, Farmer Flores looked at me a real long time. Then he rolled his eyes up, way up high to the sky. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. And that's the end. Here's the final picture. You can see Farmer Flores has his hat off and Junie B. Jones is dancing. So that was super short. So I'm gonna go ahead and start our next teacher read aloud, which is called The BFG by Roald Dahl. It's one of my favorites. Now, if you've seen the movie, just know that the book is always better than the movie. And this version is a little bit different and obviously the original. So the setting takes place in London, England. So sometimes I might break into my British accent. You'll have to see if that happens. The main character is Sophie and she lives in an orphanage. There's Sophie right there, you can see her. And you're gonna find out about the adventures that she has. The first chapter is called The Witching Hour. Here we go. Sophie couldn't sleep. A brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains and it was shining right on her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room and onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from the downstairs and there were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open but nobody was walking on the pavement outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. And there she is laying in her bed. Perhaps she told herself this is what they called the witching hour. The witching hour somebody had once whispered to her was that special moment in the middle of the night when every child and every grown-up was in a deep, deep sleep and all the dark things came up from hiding and had the world to themselves. The moonbeam was brighter than ever on Sophie's pillow. She decided to get out of bed and close the gap in the curtains. You got punished if you were caught out of bed after lights out. Even if you said you had to go to the laboratory, there was no... That was not accepted as an excuse, and they punished you just the same. But there was no one about now. Sophie was sure of that. She reached up for her glasses that lay on the chair beside her bed. They had steel rims and very thick lenses. She could hardly see a thing without them. She put them on and slipped out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. When she reached the curtain, Sophie hesitated. She longed to duck underneath them and lean out of the window to see what the world looked like now that the witching hour was at hand. She listened again. Everywhere it was deathly still. The longing to look out became so strong she couldn't resist it. Quickly, she ducked under the curtains and leaned out of the window. In the silvery moonlight, the village street she knew so well seemed completely different. The houses looked bent and crooked, like houses in a fairy tale. Everything was pale and ghostly and milky white. Across the road, she could see Mrs. Rance's shop, where you bought buttons and wool and bits of elastic. It didn't look real. There was something dim and misty about that, too. Sophie allowed her eyes to travel further and further down the street. Suddenly, she froze. There was something coming up 
from the street on the opposite side. It was something black, something tall and black, something very tall and very black and very thin. We'll stop right there. The next chapter is called Who? And I want to show you something that arrived today. So I've had all of your book covers laminated. So the cover is on one side and you're about the author on the other side. I have them all here. So hopefully your illustrating is going well. I'll be cutting these and trimming them so that they're ready to be bound over your stories once they're all illustrated. Now, once you've illustrated them, you can also practice reading them to yourself. So you can work on your fluency as if you were going to present that story to the class. We'll see if we get to that point or not. Um, and at some point, we'll talk about how I can get those illustrations from you and bind them uh, with your cover and your book. And um, it'll be really fun to have that finished product. So have a great day. See you later. Bye.